Router Gods video. My name is Humphrey Chung and in this video we're going to take a look at a pretty interesting problem with two routers. And this problem actually comes from the Cisco Learning Network which is a free website done by Cisco and people studying for their CCNA through CCIE post their questions up and other people try to answer them. So I thought this was pretty interesting. We've got two routers and as you can see from the diagram the subnets on the directly connected interfaces on the FAST00 interface are in different subnets. So on router 1 we have 10.61.32.1 in the second router R2 we've got 10.71.32.1 now normally your directly connected interfaces would be in the same subnet so for example R1 would be 10.61.32.1 and R2 would be 10.61.32.2 or something like that. Uh, here though we want to have them in different subnets and we want to get them to ping and uh, run a routing protocol. Uh, and now this particular guy who posted the question he's able to get the static route running so if he makes a default route which we'll do uh, he can ping but uh, when he tries to run RIP then it, it basically dies out. So first of all we're going to set it up and actually I've already set up the two routers with the IP addresses. We've added in a loopback just for kicks. And let's just pull in one of our console windows for R1. Let's just verify that everything is correct. I'll do a show IP int BR. Whoops. Show IP int BR. And you can see we've got a fast 00, zero Ethernet. And we've got that IP address. It's up and up. And we have a loopback of all ones. Uh, no routing protocol running just yet. What we're going to do is we're going to put a static route, a default route, so IP route, all zeros, all zeros, and we're going to send it out fast zero zero. So basically what we're saying is if we don't know where to send it, if it's not in our routing table, shoot it out fast zero zero, which is towards R2. So exit out of there and just do a quick show IP route. And so you can see we've got our two connected routes and our static route. Going to move R1 out of the way and pop in R2. Just verify that our interfaces are correct. We've got FAST00, 10, 71, 32, 1. It's up and up. And we've got our loopback of all twos. Let's set up our static route. IP route, all zeros, all zeros, FAST00. Zero, zero. And then we do a show IP route just to verify. And our static route is there. Okay, so now the question is, can we ping the other side? And we'll try it, 10, 61, 32, 1. We have a success. Can we ping the loop back? And we have a success there. We could also try pinging from the source. So we could ping R1's loop back from our loop back. And we have a success. So everything pretty much works. Now, the danger here with two default routes pointing towards each other is if you try to ping an IP address that does not reside anywhere on the network. So if I tried to ping 1.1.1.2, right? None of our interfaces in our network has this. Then what's going to happen is it's just going to bounce back and forth forever. It's going to be it's going to be a loop and it's going to keep bouncing back and forth until the TTL goes to zero. So that's not good, but uh, not really a problem in in our two router network right here. Okay, so now let's kill the static route. So we just hit the up arrow a couple times, control A to get to the beginning and put a no in front of that. So we have killed that static route, that default route, go to R R1, conf T, hit the up arrow a couple times, control A and put a no in front of that. So our static routes are gone and if I'm on R2, let's try pinging 2.2.2.2, the loopback of R2, and you can see now it dies out. Let me just stop that. And let's try to ping the other side, uh, 10.71.32.1, and that dies out. Okay, so now getting to the main part of the problem, the RIP. All right, we want to do the RIP routing protocol, so we go to R1. Pretty easy configuration. Router RIP version 2, no auto, just for kicks. You know, those three lines you're going to do pretty much by memory anytime you start off RIP. 
And we're going to do a network statement of 10.61.32.0. You don't really need to do that. You could have just done all 10s if you wanted to. Uh, what you could also do is do network 0000, which throws everything into RIP. So your loopback 0 and your fast 00, zero will be thrown into RIP. Actually, let's do that. And then I'm going to go over to the other side. Router rip version 2, no auto. And network of all zeros. And so we have rip running on all of our interfaces on both of our routers. What I'm going to do is uh, do a show IP protocols just to make sure everything is up and running. So we're good. We've got rip running off the fast ethernet and the loopback and we're routing for all of our networks and you can see here that because our interfaces are in different subnets we do not have a gateway in RIP. Okay, So here's what's going to happen. If I do a show IP route you can see that I've got nothing. Right? I, all I have is my connected interfaces nothing's coming through RIP and if it's not in my routing table I won't be able to ping it. So we already know that if I type that in, it's not going to work because it's not in my routing table, plus I don't have a default route to it, right? So it's going to die out. So let's troubleshoot this. What's going on? Well, your interfaces are definitely sending out RIP updates, right? So every 30 seconds, the RIP packet goes out. Uh, now the problem is, is the other side getting it? And if it is getting it, is the other side accepting that update? So we go on R1, we're going to do debug IP RIP, hit enter, and let's see what happens. We're going to have to wait a little bit, but that's all right. Okay, so then we do U all to stop that. So we got lucky on our first update, RIP ignored a V2 update from bad source. So we got the update from 10.71.32.1. Okay, so we got it from the other side, and we got it from the fast Ethernet 00. Okay. So what RIP does is it performs what is called a validity check. And what a validity check is, is when R2 or R1, when it shoots over the RIP packet, the other router is going to get it and it's going to do a check and say, okay, well, let's say we're looking at R2. It just got a packet from R1. It's going to say, well, I've got an interface that's on 10.71.32.1. I just got a packet from 10.61, which is on a different subnet. Since I got the packet from a different subnet, I'm not going to accept it into my routing table. Now there's a way to change this. We can actually disable this source check, and it's actually called the source validity check, and we can actually make this work. We go into R1. We're actually going to do this on both routers. Still cough T. We have to go back into router rip. And we have to put in no. Let's do a question mark there. And we've got this. Let's see what we got here. Let's see if I can find it. Validate. Okay, second one from the bottom. I was close. No validate update source. Okay, and you can see here it gives you a nice tooltip. Perform sanity checks against the source address of routing updates. So we disable this, and let's disable it from the other side. No validate update source. Go back to R1. Okay, let's see what happens here when we do a debug IP rip. Let's see what happens. Gonna have to wait a while for these packets to fly. And we've got our packets, you all. There you go. Okay, so RIP received a V2 update from 10.71.32.1, so that's the directly connected neighbor on FAST00. And we also got information about 2.2.2.2, which is the loopback. So, looks pretty good. Let's do a show IP route. With that, we got an R route going through 2.2.2.2. So, that's pretty cool. So let's see if we can actually ping the other side. And looks like it's going to bomb out.
and that's probably going to be because we don't have a default route in there. But let's see if we can ping the other side's loop back. And that's going to bomb out also. Okay, so we've got, let me just make sure my IP routing table is still good. Okay, so we still have this routing table, everything's good. Now let's add in the static route and see if we can get full connectivity. And go over to R2. Whoops, show IP route. And so we have a R route for RIP and we've got our static route at the bottom. Our final test, see if we can ping all ones. We have a success, let's see if we can ping the other side. And we have a success. So what we did is by disabling the source validity check, we're able to get the RIP packets to be accepted by both sides, but then we had to add back in the IP default route to regain full connectivity. So it's actually a two-parter. You just can't do the RIP updates in this case, and that's because they are in separate subnets. You have to add in the default route. That way your router knows that, okay, whatever packet you get, you're gonna just chuck to the other side. So let's take a look at our final configuration. We're gonna do it from R2. Uh, the R1's configuration will be similar. So on R1, you can see here, that's our loopback address, all two, or this is R2. IP address, all twos, we have our interface. The nitty gritty stuff is gonna be in the router rip portion, router rip version two, no validate update source, network of all zeros. So we've thrown everything into rip. And then you could see this is where we have our default route going out fast zero zero. So it's pretty cool. And let's just do a final check of our IP routing table. And this is what you should see from R2's perspective.